When you think of New York, you probably think of structures like this, massive bridges or glittering towers of steel and concrete. But actually, New York has a wilder side. The city's 8 million residents live alongside over 600 different species of animals. In this series, we're going to be taking a closer look at some of the Big Apple's wilder residents. This is Wild New York. My name is Katie, and I'm an amateur naturalist and animal lover. I think we may have spooked him. Join me and my friend Ben as we journey around New York and learn a little bit more about the wildlife that shares our home. If you live in or visit New York, you're bound to encounter some unconventional smells. But did you know that not all those smells come from the humans of the most populous city in America? New York is home to some stinky residents, and we're going to learn more about them today. Only one species of skunk currently calls New York City home, Mephitis mephitis, more commonly known as the striped skunk. Skunks are omnivores. They eat bugs, lizards, birds, and even other rodents. They can also survive off worms, berries, and human food scraps. Their varied diet makes them extreme survivors, the ideal resident for a metropolitan community. Their coats are high contrast colors, black and white, which warn animals of danger. Don't come any closer or you will get sprayed. They have an extremely good sense of smell. That's why they have little eyes and big noses. They actually don't need their eyes very much. They use their noses to find food underground. And though they have long nails, they're actually very blunt, and they're used for digging rather than scratching. Skunks live in burrows, and they'll use abandoned burrows, hollow logs, or large rock dens as their homes. A skunk will have about 10 burrows and will rotate among them, like this one here behind me. A skunk will usually establish their home close to a source of water, rarely venturing more than two miles away. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the skunk spray. Now the spray is actually the skunk's last line of defense. Now you know a skunk's about to spray you when it stamps its feet, hisses, and turns its butt towards you. The liquid is sprayed with wonderful accuracy and can shoot up to 10 feet, and the smell can linger for about a mile and a half. Now the spray can cause irritation and asthma, and it's actually a myth that tomato juice can be used to get the smell away. You need to neutralize the odor by using 3% hydrogen peroxide, warm water, laundry detergent, and baking soda. Now baby skunks get their spray at three to four weeks, so even though they're very cute, you need to stay a safe and respectable distance. Like many animal species, the skunks have adapted their schedule to the city that never sleeps, and under cover of darkness, they're more frequently seen. We're here in Fort Tryon Park, and let's see what we can find. Striped skunks have an easily identifiable coloration. Two thick white stripes along the back and tail contrast sharply with an otherwise black coat. The specific pattern of the stripes on the head, body, and tail can vary among individuals and is accompanied by a thin white stripe running from the snout to forehead. Although baby skunks will stick close to the mother until adolescence, the skunk is primarily a solitary creature. Let's see if we can find some in the wild. So we found our first skunk tonight at Fort Tryon Park. It's a little baby, it's coming close to us, so we gotta be a little careful. Ah, there's our little guy. While Katie loops around from behind, I have the unenviable task of approaching with the camera and the flashlight. But like we said, skunks have poor eyesight, so they're not too bothered by the flashlight. In fact, they barely notice us at all. Now remember, skunks get their spray at four weeks, so even though they're adorable, keep a safe distance. Right behind me over here, we have three skunks, two of which are twins and the other one is the A group of skunks together is called a surfeit, while the youngsters, they are known as kids. Typically, they stay with the mother until about two and a half months of age, at which point they're ready to venture out on their own. These two here are experimenting with wrestling, a valuable technique for both fighting off predators and capturing prey. Despite their musk being underdeveloped, they still have the strong instinct to assume an attacking posture if they feel threatened. Thanks to their position near the top of the food chain and their powerful defense mechanism, 
Skunks tend to be pretty laid back. If one you're observing gets agitated, just give it some space and it'll go right back to that adorable, carefree behavior. Oh, and uh, make sure you don't put the flashlight behind the camera. Great work, Ben. Skunks do not exhibit sexual dimorphism, meaning it's hard to tell males and females apart. The biggest tell is behavior. This is clearly the matriarch of Fort Tryon Park, as she's lingering near the burrow and watching after her kids. Now that we've met the skunks of New York, it's time to ask the most important question. How do they fit into our ecosystem? If you and your dog have been sprayed, you probably think of them as a nuisance, but they're actually very beneficial. Their spray can ward off larger predators, and they're helpful to farmers and gardeners by feeding off of agricultural pests. As a predator high up on the food web, skunks play an important role in maintaining healthy environments. Their predation of other rodents helps keep faster breeders in check. Skunks have a high mortality rate in early life. In New York, birds of prey like the great horned owl hunt them, and they're highly susceptible to disease. In North America, they're the number two vector for rabies. In the wild, they can live up to seven years, but on average, their lifespan is only two to five years. Despite its drawbacks and reputation in popular culture, skunks are a vital part of any ecosystem. If you and your pet can keep a safe distance, if you can properly dispose of your trash, and if you can learn to live alongside them, the skunk is another beautiful creature that can keep the concrete jungle a wild New York.